We're going to take a look at the FileMaker 19.2.1 update. Welcome to Productive Computing. I'm Paul Fisher. Let's take a look at the quick start experience. Now you're only going to see this if you are using the Macintosh operating system and it is using the English language. Everyone sees this and if you want to use it, you click the Get Started button. And we get this simple interface here where if we click on a field and we drag it onto the layout, it does a lot of the work for us here. And you're going to do your layout work using grids. And then if I want to bring a field in here, it will format it differently. I can now save this. And I can say I'm done. And I can go back in by clicking Edit. And I will get the Quick Start experience again. Now it will allow me to continue to do this until I use the Pro Tool Set. Once I click the Pro Tool Set, it's going to convert it over and I'm not going to be able to use Quick Start anymore. However, it's also going to make a copy of the file right here and it's going to append Quick Start behind it and that's a snapshot and I can open that back up in Quick Start. On top of that, you can take a Quick Start file like this is, I can load it into the cloud and I can continue to work on it from there in Quick Start mode. However, right now, Quick Start Experience is not compatible with FileMaker Server. If you do try to upload it, you'll get this error. A new feature is controlling plugin access between files. This is an extended privilege set that will determine whether or not a source file is allowed to execute operations in a target file. The two operations involved are execute a script by name and execute a SQL statement. Now, any new file created will come with the FM plugin extended privilege set. If it's a pre existing file, you'll need to go in and add this manually. As for the server, the big update here is that installation became more streamlined. An uninstall is not necessarily required. It finds your existing databases, configuration files, SSL certificate, logs, and other files. However, you do need to back up your PHP folder. Another update is that the FileMaker admin API can now uh, access commands that were previously only available through the admin console and through the command line interface. Those commands are get metadata for FileMaker server, configure additional folders, import an SSL certificate, import a license certificate, and manage plugins. You can append this path to your FileMaker server admin console and do them for yourselves. If you are interested in learning more about the server admin API, we provide a free file and course for this at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. I'll include a link in the description below. In addition to that, FileMaker server now supports Java 11. Another bigger one is when FileMaker clients cancel fines on a hosted file, the fines are now halted quickly. Previously canceled fines continued to run on the host and failed to stop promptly on the client. So you're going to see a performance increase there. And the FileMaker server supports HTTP2, which provides faster web performance for web publishing, including Windows and Linux. Because server is a bit more specific, I'm just going to include a link to this document and you can read the known issues for yourself. You can expand the description to find links to the documents mentioned. And remember that liking a video is a great way to let us know that we're producing content that you find useful. So until next time.